a small app with a growing number of users, or a hotel chain with hundreds of new guests per day? What about a music service with countless songs and hundreds of thousands of users? Now, have a think about it. Where do I keep all this data? And how can I grow it without blowing up my budget on servers? Let's talk about a service provided by Amazon Web Services known as DynamoDB. What DynamoDB is, is a non-relational database for applications that need performance at any scale. Now that sounds good at all, but let's talk about the main features of DynamoDB. Number one, it is fast. Consistent responsiveness, single digit millisecond. Super quick, that's awesome. What about scalability? Well, it has endless scalability. It's virtually unlimited with throughput and storage. What about management? DynamoDB is fully managed. It's a serverless database which provides automatic scaling of throughput up or down. Wow, that sounds incredible. But what about the security? Now DynamoDB is safe. It provides encryption and continuous data backup. Also high availability with replications of tables across multiple AWS regions. Now what about the big business? Yes, it's ready for big business with mission critical workloads, guaranteed reliability and full oversights of your tables. Now, that sounds good and all, but it's a lot to digest. So, why don't we talk about the differences again between a non-relational database and a relational one. And where do we use each? A relational database uses structured query language known as SQL. The benefits of a relational database is it provides higher consistency and reliability. Plus, it is optimal for very large complex data sets. Now, how does this compare? Well, a non-relational database has no SQL. It's faster, it's flexible, and there is no data admin required. As well, it's infinitely scalable. So you can see the difference. Basically, SQL has vertical scalability. The more data to be added and processed, the more processes and servers need to be used. For most businesses anyway. But eventually, a ceiling will be hit. Meaning, there might be very high costs, management issues, and energy expenses. Now, NoSQL has horizontal scalability, meaning it's limitless in scale by adding shards. So now we've talked about the differences, but let's talk more about how DynamoDB works. Now, DynamoDB has a highest level object with no server, no database server, no schema, but tables. So what is a table? Let's start by drawing a table. A table is like a container. It contains items where items also contain attributes. Now a table can store an unlimited amount of items, but we don't need to worry about the attributes contained inside each item. Any table can have an unlimited amount of items, but the maximum size of an item cannot exceed 400 kilobytes. Now each table must have a partition key. It's mandatory. It has a key value access pattern which determines data distribution. We can also have an optional key known as a sorting key, which provides a one-to-many relationship and this enables for richer querying capability. Now that's pretty cool and all, but Let's talk about partitioning. DynamoDB actually uses partitioning. Partitioning of the tables, meaning the tables are broken up into smaller subsets so we can query our data faster because there is less data to scan. Now partition keys uniquely define an item for building an unordered hash index. This allows our tables to be partitioned for scale. Now what about sorting keys? Sorting keys? They use two attributes together to uniquely identify an item with an unordered hash index. It serves basically to arrange data. Simple, right? 
What about going lower level? Let's talk about how these tables are stored. So the storage of a DynamoDB table is stored on solid state drives or SSDs, meaning it's fast and the storage is safe. Now let's talk about three-way replication. Data is replicated on three distinct availability zones, meaning we have more accurate writes and reads of information with stronger consistency. Okay, now to the final topic of indexes. We have two types, LSI, local secondary index, and GSI, global secondary index. There are five of each for every given table. A local secondary index has partition keys which remain the same, sort keys are variable, and alternate versions of those keys are created for the same table. Now let's talk about global secondary indexes. Both partitions and sort keys are variable. They're created in parallel for different versions of a table. The read capacity units and write capacity units need to be provisioned separately to avoid throttling. So those are the key differences. And that, my friends, brings us all the way to the very end. So which one of these should I choose? Well, we use local secondary index when we want a max capacity of 10 gigabytes per partition key. Now this is created together with the table. We need to know this up front for highest consistency. And on to global secondary index. So we will select a global secondary index when we want our item collection data size to be over 10 gigabytes. It allows for more flexibility and eventual consistency, not highest consistency. But data might not be exactly the same at every given time. Okay guys, thanks very much for watching. I hope you can watch more. Please comment and share if you like the video.